Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we are going to take a look at this 1957 oval window ragtop build a bug project that we are wrapping up for a client of ours. Awesome client named Bernie. And uh, I'm going to walk around the car with you and show you what we did to this thing. But first, if you don't mind, please hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, get notifications, hit the like button, share this content, let's get it out there. And uh, if you don't mind, I also have a PayPal donation link in the description. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can send us a couple bucks, keep this content rolling, keep this information coming to you week by week. Uh, it's our pride, our joy to serve you guys. Whatever you can afford is fine with us, and uh, we thank you. So back to the bug, 57 oval window rag top. You know, guys, these oval rags... I keep saying it, gosh, but it's, it's more and more uh, becoming difficult to find them in a complete condition, solid condition, not bastardized to any degree. Um, this was one of them. We found this out of New Mexico. A guy was already working on it. Um, and, you know, there are some elements on the car that are not, you know, quote unquote, all original. Uh, but that was okay with this client. They did not want to go all original, as you notice. Uh, this he opted for not to, uh, to not go with the bullet front turn signals this would have had 56 57 would have had the bullet uh, turn signal on the fender over here uh, but he opted to go for a cleaner look and have the blinker in the headlight bucket that's what we opted to do right there so we went along with that um, and he also painted it a color that really was not a VW color uh, so to speak, um, there was a color in the 50s for convertibles called metallic beige. And this is very close to that. Um, I've never really seen a metallic beige, original metallic beige beetle up close and personal. Convertibles are rare in the oval era. So really tough to tell, but uh, you know, from what I've seen online, this comes very close. Uh, so they went, to, went with this gold color, and of course we went with uh, so fine on the interior, and I'll show you that in a minute. So as we come down the side here, you see we went with uh, black smoothie rims. We actually bought smoothie rims brand new from CIP1.com. Really nice smoothie rims. The only, uh, if there was a complaint that I would have with them, are the hubcap clips. The clips that come on these rims, from behind this hubcap of course, uh, very tough. Uh, it was tough to get these hubcaps on. Um, we had a bend and shape the clips a, a bit, grease them a bit to get these hubcaps on. And then when, while we were doing that, the clips were breaking. So we had to then replace the clips on the rims. Uh, so they're shaped just a little different, um, I guess, compared to original. Um, but overall, I mean, it is a clean rim. Uh, it, 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 you know, they painted up really nice. Uh, we sanded them down. So uh, pretty cool. I mean, I mean, it's at least good that they're repopping the smoothie rims because they're becoming harder to find. Um, in good condition too. So we're going with the black on the rim. Of course the black running boards from Wolfsburg West. Stainless steel molding. We still love those running boards. Stainless steel body trim. He opted for a passenger side outside mirror. Of again, Wolfsburg West. Beautiful two-fold ragtop sunroof. Very cool. Original rails. Original mechanism. Canvas material came from So Fine out of Colorado. I love those guys. Also opted for uh, pop-out windows in the back. I do recommend getting pop-out windows when you have an oval, uh, or not, a, not necessarily an oval, but a sunroof, uh, because uh, there is a helicopter thwarting effect on your ears. If you have this sunroof pulled back, and if you don't have pop-out windows, you might feel a little bit of that thwarting effect on your ears. Uh, you could always open up a vent window, but uh, pop-out windows are really nice. And they, yeah, it's a great addition uh, to, the, to the bug. And as we come around back, brand new bumpers, Wolfsburg West. Love those bumpers, brackets, tubes. All that's new. Snowflake taillights, the honeycomb, whichever you want to call them. And uh, we used our video and our measurements to make sure... Uh, we had the right tail light placement since we did have uh, replacement fenders for the rear. I have a video on that, guys. Now in the engine compartment, 
of course, did not go original. So he went with a 1600 single port motor with an alternator. 12 volt system in this car. And uh, I've driven this up on the highway. It is fun. Uh, I'm used to oval windows, uh, 50s Beetles, having a 36 horse, and trying to get up on that highway and getting going. And <laughs> it's always nice to, to jump in one of these cars and get the 60 horsepower uh, and get up on the road. Uh, came out really nice. Uh, we had this motor built uh, by a fellow in California, uh, Steve Predmore. If you look him up on the Samba, he's there. He's doing some nice motor builds for us. If uh, we're coming to a crunch time and we can't get uh, some of the work done here because we are busy. He's been doing some great work for us and he knows the characteristics that we like and what kind of paint, what kind of gloss and uh, coming out real nice. You see the uh, replacement rear fender, of course no H. It was replaced. Again, this client was not going for an absolute period correct uh, car. You've already seen that between the motor and the paint. But uh, she came out really awesome. Everywhere I go with this car, you know, conversation piece, right? You go, you know, go to get gas, go out for lunch, someone's coming over to you to talk to you. Also to show you guys, our tar board material is in the back of this motor as well. And it's that waffle board. People seem to really take to this. They really like the way it looks. It makes the engine compartment speak a little bit more. Uh, makes it pop. Gives it a little bit of definition, gives it a little bit of a, some more detail that you would not normally see. Uh, and it's uh, close to what was originally maybe offered uh, back in the day. I've seen various boards offered uh, back then, um, some with dimples, uh, but the waffle board seems to uh, be a nice hit with us. Let's take a look on the inside. And as you see, this is again, so fine product out of Colorado. And uh, we did have to get this uh, custom red. She did not have this red material in stock, um, but um, we have several swatches on hand and she'll get any material you want. As long as you get the yardage, you can send it off to her and she'll make it, uh, which is really nice uh, with Carol. This is her material. This is uh, natural tweed. Really nice, very close to the bone tweed, but if you notice, it does have some uh, beige fibers in it, which is a really nice uh, bounce off. I really like this. Um, might be something I, lo I look into some with one of my cars in the future. Uh, one thing I want to point out, which is becoming more and more difficult to find, um, is this chrome trim. As you see here, this Wolfsburg West has been, uh, from what my knowledge is, is the sole provider of the early door panel trim uh, and it's been from time to time they've been out of stock and it's been taking them a while to get them back in stock so if you do have an early car that has the original trim I would suggest holding on to it try to polish it or get it chromed um, get it finished or plated uh, just so you can have it for your car um, this trim that you see here is for a 66 Beetle. Now, Wolfsburg had this in stock, that's all they had. Um, so I had to grab what we could. And uh, yeah, you'll notice it is short. The 66 does not meet, the door panel's different, you know. But um, it still does the job, it still gives the right look. Uh, we just centered the trim, you know, perfectly in the middle of the board so it didn't look odd. And uh, you can always do that and go that route. Um, or you, you, know, you might not want to trim um, a two-tone panel like this, what you have here. It kind of breaks up the board. But 56, 57 uh, boards were not uh, two-tone in America. Uh, in Europe, they might have had some two-tone. Uh, but in America, it would have been like a solid board. You would have had no stitching from the top. None of this would have been here. It would have been smooth all the way down to just the bottom just that stitch on the bottom for 56 57 oval and uh, so you you would need something to break up the middle they had the chrome trim originally to go across the board to break up that solid block uh, but if you're going for a custom interior interior and you want something different you could do a two-tone like this which came basically in the in you know 58 uh, 59 
and you can go with something like this to kind of break it up if you don't have uh, trim to find. And here's that beautiful interior. Really came out nice, guys. Really tight. So fine stuff is super tight, super straight. Um, I, I love using their material. I like to use TMI foam, actually, with their materials. I think it brings it out, um, makes it nice and straight, really even. Um, the lines look fabulous. Uh, just can't say, uh, can't say it better, you know? So really nice material. Even come in the back here, we even made some pillows up. She does some great pillows now. That guy Mike there that's doing some fabulous work there for her. All right, so let's go into the dash. And as you see here, of course, the Repop Porsche Banjo wheel. Very popular with us and uh, our clients. They seem to love it. And uh, went with the Golden Lady horn button, as you can see here. And what we're doing is some people are asking me, you know, lately, what are we painting our turn signals, uh, steering column, shifter, e-brake, seat frames, right? Uh, almond from the Rust-Oleum is still good. Um, if you're at home and you're on a budget and you want to paint your own stuff, the almond from Rust-Oleum is good. Or Valspar paint, say from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, it's called Lovely Bluff. Valspar paint is pretty good too. But what we've been doing is of sending the stuff out to my painter, the media blasting down to metal, and then we're using a color, Toyota Beige. If you look up Toyota and Beige, they have a color, Beige, and it looks really nice. So we've been going with that lately, and it's fully clear coated and everything looks nice. It's got a nice look to it. It's got a little bit of that almondy look. It's it's not white white, and it's got a creamy uh, look to it. So uh, that's what we've been using lately. So if you wanted to use your painter and have him paint up your frames and such, uh, Toyota beige is a great color. And they might pull out a swatch book that has three different colors, and you just got to look at the swatches and, and pick which one you like. So, but continuing on here. Uh, 50 speedo, clear needle, we restored. And then if you see here, this is an aftermarket Denny gas gauge. Now I got this gas gauge from Vintage Speed. Okay, so if you look at Vintage Speed VW, you'll, you'll go to their website. Um, they are in Thailand, I believe. And uh, I've been getting some of their mufflers. They got stainless steel Abarth. Uh, mufflers, uh, which are fabulous. I mean, the material is just fabulous. But this has an LED digital gauge to it. So let's check this out. I'm going to turn the key on. How cool is that? Really cool. Um, I love this gauge. I mean, <laughs> I don't really put newer, you know, digital things into my cars, but I got to be honest. I mean, that looks really cool. Uh, and what's really nice, it actually keeps a good, accurate, um, a gauge of what how much fuel you have um, but one thing I want to point out is in their instructions they want as you've noticed like this is like there's two pieces here there's a face and then there's a back piece the problem is is that they wanted you to have this face up on the, the dash and this back piece behind the dash but they want you to really cut the dash up to get this through because this back piece is where the ha, is the light circuit and this light shines through to show here and that means I had to cut a piece of the dash like this length off so the light would shine through so we didn't want to do that and so all we had to do was just drill a couple a couple small holes just to get this mounted and uh, to have just the wires feed through the, behind the dash. Real simple to hook up too. They have videos on it. But um, we opted to keep the whole thing on the front here just because I did not want to cut more of the dash. So here's your brand new chrome speaker grill. They still make these, which is excellent, thank God. And we have here the, of course, retro radio. And he went with the vintage looking retro radio with the ivory knobs and buttons. And um, yeah, 
I mean, it's not to my taste. Uh, some people, again, they just want some modern stuff in their vintage vehicle, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, to me, if you have a car that's not necessarily numbers matching and you want some modernization to your car, uh, this radio is excellent. It looks excellent. It's clean looking. You got Bluetooth. You got AM. You got FM. You got everything you need. You got hookups for you know, iPhone, iPad, uh, whatever you like, um, which is really nice. But Bluetooth feature is great. I mean, everything's wireless uh, these days, so it's that's really nice. Excellent addition to the glove box door. I love these handles here because I'll be honest, you hit this button, these doors never really want to spring open. But at least with the handle, this helps open your glove box door. So um, I know you got to drill two holes in the glove box door to get this uh, pull on. But uh, I think it's a nice little addition, looks great, and uh, helps you open the door. And here's your headliner. They went with the beige tweed headliner. This is the first time, or actually no, the second time I have put um, a different color, two different color tweeds in my vehicles. I didn't, I w sometimes I, I just like to stay consistent, but to be honest, this is the beige tweed. Uh, up against the natural tweeds. The natural tree is a little uh, is lighter. So I was a little worried, you know, the, the different combination there, but it actually works. You know, you have beige fibers in this natural tweed, and that bounces off the beige uh, headliner that you see here. I did two different headliners, uh, two different, I'm um, sorry, tweed materials in my 70 convertible. Uh, so I used uh, espresso tweed on the seats and door panels, but the headliner was a beige tweed. So there's colors that match each other throughout those fibers, and I think it works. We also have the famous Wolfsburg supplied cocoa mats. This also bounces off well, and they went with the German square weave tan carpet from Wolfsburg West, of course. And uh, I still go with them when it comes to carpet, just because they have their cuts right. They do also the heater outlet rings, and they'll apply those to your carpet when you order the kit and the rings together. So they will sew that in. Another thing, too, I wanted to point out was the what's being offered today when it comes to fuel reserve tap extension. I, I don't know what's happened, but you know they have these new reserves that are on the market, the new extensions, and this is a rod that then shoots through the firewall. Normally, the aftermarket taps or extensions would hook onto the J-tube, the L-tube, the black tube that sticks through the firewall and just looped around that tube. Now this extension shoots straight through the firewall and goes directly to the fuel tap under the gas tank and they now have this kind of plate on the front. Um, I have seen some old footage and old photos of a plate that looked very similar to this back in the day, uh, but some of the other uh, aftermarket extensions that I used to get are now gone, and I, I'm having a tr trouble finding them. They used to have uh, the face and with uh, letters on it to indicate what position you were on when it came to the tap. Um, if anybody knows out there where to get those old school taps that used to be uh, the old school old school uh, extensions that used to be on the market. You know, please do hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'd like to see where people are getting those. But this is the only thing I can really find these days. I mean, it does the job. It works, um, but a um, little more um, complicated to to get it going. Um, it's, like I said, it shoots through the firewall and goes directly to the fuel tap as opposed to before it just hooked up to the tube uh, in the, inside the car. So uh, that's that on the fuel tap. And here we are in the trunk area. As you can see, we have the matching spare tire, which is the Coker Radial Wide White Wall Tire, the Nostalgia Tire, 165R15. Great tire to put on the Beetle, and it's matching to what else is around the car. Um, sometimes these radials can get a little tight in the spare tire tub area, um, but you can take a little bit of air out. And again, Beetles have low air compared to most modern day cars. So uh, if you put your tire around 25, 28 pounds, I wouldn't go lower than that for a radial. Um, 22 pounds might be okay too. Uh, I mean, I know in the books they're saying 17 or 18 pounds for the, the tires in the front, but that was for bias tires. 
So uh, you want to try to compensate and kind of meet in the middle somewhere when it comes to a radial tire. It's a little dangerous to be in the teens in tire pressure for a radial tire at this size. So we get these from JEGS or SummitRacing.com. They're usually about $160 a piece, uh, but those sites are pretty cool because they have free shipping. As we go on into the trunk area, I love the wire covers that Wolfsburg West supplies. It's like a fiberboard material, really tough, really durable, um, great material. It, it, it really looks the part, you know, it looks the piece. It's not plastic, so pretty cool there. And here's an original humpback gas tank that's correct for, you know, 56, 57, all the way up to 60 beetle. And uh, this tank already came with a mounting hole for a sending unit. It's a brand new uh, video sending unit that's going to work for the, the Denny gas gauge that we have in the car. Now, originally, these were not original in the cars from the factory. From a dealer perspective, you could get these uh, as an option to upgrade. So it was an option. Uh, to get a gas gauge in these uh, in these years. So this is a brand new sending unit that we bought from CIP1.com. It's a tube structure and it shoots straight down into the tank. So you would have to modify your tank to accommodate that sending unit. So there you have it guys. This was a body off restoration, very similar to what we're doing. Uh, this car right here is a 56 oval rag top that's at the paint shop and here's the chassis. We did the same work to this car right here, Bernie's car, and uh, this is the way she came out. She looks beautiful. Um, just got to put a few more miles on it before I give it back to the client. A couple touch-ups here and there, and uh, the car is on its way. If uh, anybody's interested in having something like this restored, or you want a bug like this, just uh, hit me up at chris at classicvwbugs.com. Well, my phone number is also on my website, 845-290-9900 is classic VW Bugs. And if you want something like this, give me a holler and uh, we go through details. Details are also on my website in the build a bug section. So i uh, love to hear your comments, guys, in, in the, below the description. And uh, I will see you next time. Um.